welcome to the flip side of crypto. Sometimes, looking at your phone, the crypto prices might be damaging to your health. Traveling might help, although now we have COVID. However, we have a project right now that might revolutionize traveling. Let's hear more about it from Maxim Ismailov. Maxim, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Indeed. So, Maxim, without further ado, traveling during these days seems like an oxymoron. Of course, we want to travel. We can't really because of Rona. But crypto is traveling at the speed of light, almost. And quite frankly, how can Winding Tree combine the two? So we've been working on this project for, for a few years now. And uh, over the course of this several years, I am happy to see that we have more and more support from the travel industry. You know, if before, well, let's say in two, 2016 or 17, when I was just starting to think about this idea, um, people from the travel space who didn't really understand crypto, who didn't even know what crypto is, uh, of course, they were saying, what are you talking about? But now uh, I see uh, with with delight that so many people very high up uh, start on, start understanding that, start understanding what crypto is, how it can move uh, all sorts of different industries, not just travel um, forward. And uh, yeah, especially for travel with, uh, with the products and with the offerings that we are uh, working right now and with the pilot projects uh, that we are working right now, um, those people, and you might read those, those articles, I don't know, on LinkedIn, on um, there is this travel uh, outlet that's called Focus Wire that you can look up right now, uh, where, you know, former uh one of the executives uh, from iata which is the international uh, travel uh, airline industry association of course uh organization uh yeah he's talking with uh you know again delight about the opportunities that crypto brings uh to the table here and i'm not talking just about uh you know paying for travel with crypto that's um you know if i understood you correctly it used to be crypto and traveling was oh, okay you'll use it as a you know discount or as a it was a gimmick really but right now it, it became serious it's the real deal right now and could you just dive in deep so winding tree what do you offer what can people expect uh, potentially that they could get out of blockchain and traveling could we just roll down a few bullet points what are the synergies between the two absolutely so as you actually said so you know paying with crypto for whatever it is for yeah, for a yeah. coffee for for a meal uh, at a cafe perhaps which i've done yeah, yeah. uh sure it's possible it's doable uh does it change a lot well maybe on some deep philosophical mm -hmm. level but I feel like blockchain and crypto bring to us, and you look at all of those things that are happening right now, you know, DeFi, NFTs and stuff. It's not just about payments. It's not just about the monetary value of the token that you hold in your wallet. Absolutely not. It's such a, a tectonic shift in, in all sorts of things that we do. So, but to, to talk about Winding Tree specifically, uh, what we created is is a product uh, that's called the Winding Tree Marketplace, and and that's what we set out to do back in 2017, right? So what we wanted to do to create is is the decentralized marketplace for travel, uh, where players, buyers, and and sellers, and uh, this is a B2B marketplace. So we're talking about hotels connecting directly to travel agencies and basically those travel agencies buying yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. rooms or we call it inventory from those hotels, airlines, uh, etc. directly. And of course, the key point here is directly because, uh, well, anyone who knows anything about travel industry knows that in any transaction, uh, a travel related transaction, let's say a hotel booking that you can do online today or an airline booking, um, you have five, maybe 10 sometimes intermediaries that 
Well, of course, all of them take take a small fee when you do that yeah. transaction. Uh, crazy. And they, they just garble the data that flows from one provider to another, you know, like if an OTA, if a travel agency, if an online travel agency that you as a customer are talking to, and they know a lot of things about you, right? So you told them, hey, this is my name, this is my age, this is my other, I don't know, whatever you wanted to disclose, you disclose to them. But if that information flows through five, 10 intermediaries, uh, imagine it, it's like different size bottlenecks and, and, and uh, different shape bottlenecks, I would say even, right? So, and at the end of the day, the hotel receives only your first name or, or last name, first uh, name initial and your email, that's it. You know, they cannot customize an offer to you. They can't give you a better price, maybe because you are, I don't know, a certain age group, maybe because of your uh, relationship to, to, I don't know, to a certain association or something like that. Um, all that information is lost in the process. So so we're changing, first of all, the, 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 the economics of all these transactions, right? So if you are um, a travel agency, uh, and you connect directly to the hotel, and of course you won't pay, be paying uh, all of those fees that uh, those intermediaries of the past were taking. And on the other hand, right now, a lot of uh, uh, people in the travel industry are talking about how travel should be tailored to you personally. But again, if the hotel or, or the airline, they don't receive all the information that they need to customize that experience to, to your specific needs and requests, um, yeah, they won't be able to do that. So we remove that barrier as, as well, right? So if those two players are connected directly, of yeah. course, the information flow is unbounded, so. If I answer you correctly, it's basically, it used to be that there are these many layers, many providers and data is not Basically, you cannot aggregate it. You cannot make the best offering for the client. So that's one. Number two is the ability to pay you know, with crypto removes certain barriers already. Right? Now, Winding Tree provides the marketplace where so B2B, so basically a hotel can meet uh, other service provider, etc. Basically on the same infrastructure. So it's seamless almost, right? Correct. Yeah. So, so what what is the marketplace what's uh, as i said you know we set out to yeah. to build a decentralized marketplace yeah. and you know we realized that the essence of the marketplace is really the identity the identity of that company so basically mm -hmm. uh, and, and our marketplace by the way right now is just for travel but theoretically it's extendable uh to to any other industry right because what is it it's a place uh, it's a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain where uh, you create an account for your company. You prove that your company is real. You can connect your I don't know, website, social media uh, accounts and stuff like that. Uh, and of course, you, uh, you can attach certain proofs from other companies that they give to you, certain certifications, of course, all, all of those issued in uh, an electronic form. Um, and the idea is that uh, you, pr in, in, in a decentralized way, you prove to the rest of the marketplace, hey, you're a real company, uh, you registered, you know, I, I don't know where, in, in, in the United Kingdom or something like that. Um, and uh, here's your API, you can attach your API to your profile. So basically what we created is a, uh, what we today call a system of self-sovereign identity or SSI. Uh, for organizations, and, and that's why basically the underlying technology that I helped create is called Org ID, it's an identity for organizations. And um, it's amazing if you just start thinking about the possibilities, if you, if you imagine that, okay, so you have a, a proven identity of a certain company or, or you have a network of those companies, uh, in a completely decentralized environment, there's no central controller, right? What kind of things are going to be possible there where anyone can connect to anyone without asking anyone for permission, you know? And uh, 
you know, we have many, many ways of describing what Wine and Dream Marketplace is and what it does. And, you know, we're saying about it, e-commerce, uh, online commerce, streamline the future of travel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so many ways to, to kind of phrase that. But um, the reason why we're struggling in oh. terms of like pinning down the, the description of this is that I, I think about the future where there are yeah, thousands yeah. of companies on that marketplace and I, I cannot imagine the possibilities are endless you know really yeah, so yeah, and yeah. it's very exciting indeed so it's super exciting but for the viewers at home I think you and me both are trying to grasp the current version of winding tree so Let's just say I'm a hotel and my hotel offers stays. Uh, basically, I would like travel agencies to be able to book with me instead of just booking with me with Airbnb, so on and so forth. Now, with your software, I'm then able to prove my identity. Basically, it's a way for me to have my identity on the blockchain, my own profile, of course, my own branding, all that good stuff. And what happens then? What happens with my data, right? Do I control it? Basically, is it the fact that how does my interaction with the client change or does my client never know that blockchain was involved? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I usually answer to this uh, in this way. When you make uh, a call on uh, via Zoom or Skype or something yeah. like that. Do you think oh. about the underlying technological lever, level uh, layer that makes that, that call, that makes that communication possible? Absolutely not. not. Really. You're just enjoying yeah. this experience. So does yeah. the traveler really need to know that you know, certain parts of uh, uh, his or her communication with uh, a certain hotel or maybe other travel provider are powered by the blockchain? they don't really need to know. Uh, it's absolutely not necessary. Um, but at the same time, what they might experience, uh, those travelers, is uh, really, they, they would have a superior experience to what they had before. You know, we're hoping, of course, yeah. that let's say there are two travel agencies and one is able to access uh, hotel data directly without, thus, without intermediaries. Uh, therefore, there is there are no fees that are associated uh, with those intermediaries. So hopefully, the same travel package will be cheaper on their website, right? And at the same time, that travel package, uh, as I mentioned earlier, will be tailored specifically for this customer. Uh, you know, because of the data that they provided to this travel agency, uh, as opposed to very generic travel offering that the travel agency of the past. Uh, would be able to to offer here, right? So that's what they're gonna see. And what what you said is absolutely correct. So as a hotel, uh, let's let's take a hotel as an example. Let's continue talking about that example. You create your profile. Uh, you prove against uh, certain data points. Uh, you know we have multiple different mechanisms of basically proving your information. Um, and yeah, the beauty is that you can completely control your data. Um, instead of, you know, the past again, or, or the current situation where, uh, those intermediaries, if you're a hotel, you have to work with the two companies that will put you on the market. They completely control your profile. They can, they can do whatever they want. Even if you're not on their website, those companies have been known to, to undermine your business. Like they, they have unlimited power almost right now because they Indeed. control your profile they control your data they control your presence they control everything um and yeah so so we're shifting that uh, uh around basically we're turning that equation around and we're saying no you are in control of your own data no one out there can say hey you no, you cannot trade here no we're saying of course you can this is uh this is an open marketplace. Uh, and of course, 
uh, again, because of all those different checks that we have uh, that are built in into our platform, uh, the customer on the other side or the, the, let's say the travel agency that accesses that, that hotel data, they will be able to see, oh, this is a legit hotel. I can, I can definitely see that. Oh, this is a new profile. I know nothing about it and, and I, I better stay away from that. Um, so yeah, and you know, there, there is a deep philosophical aspect to this, uh, which I'm trying to express right now. I'm writing mm. an article about, you know, how before we really needed central, we didn't have any other tools before blockchain. We, we absolutely had to have centralized intermediaries for any kind of mass, uh, activity, activity that's happening on, on a, on a mass scale, right? So I don't know for an app store, uh, for, for I don't know all sorts of big marketplaces that we have. Uh, again, travel is one of the biggest industries out there, right? And we had to have centralized intermediaries for the, those marketplaces to to be possible. But now with blockchain, we really really don't need them. Uh, we can we can do without them, and uh, our hope is that. Uh, uh, those that that new way of uh, doing commerce online in a decentralized way uh, will remove uh, barriers from from right. that communication. Will make it much cheaper. Wow. Will streamline it. Allow me to be devil's advocate, if, if I may. So, I've heard this from several projects before. Right. Uh, basically, we are trying to make it more liberal, make it more decentralized uh, information flow that the user is empowered. Wilding Tree is a great example of user empowerment, organizational empowerment. It's a better user experience overall. However, something in my mind, especially as I'm reading the news right now uh, of the bill passing this moment of recording in the US Senate, which was introduced, how they view cryptocurrency, how they view blockchain in general, I have to ask myself, uh, this vision which you have, which is a beautiful one, it's a philosophical one, do you think it's a safe one from the reach of the current centralized, uh, well, let's just say, the status quo? Absolutely, you know, because what we're really doing is we are trying to map the existing entities we're not we're not trying to uh, create a, a silk road or something like that right yeah. uh which of course you know the the, the states will uh frown upon but what we're trying to do all we're trying to do here is to map real existing entities uh to their blockchain powered online identities that's all that we're doing and we're saying if we so basically we're creating a standard for those companies to talk to each other online and to recognize each other right um yeah. Yeah. right now really those standards they, they do not exist and, and certain countries uh and, and certain jurisdictions of course they're trying to do uh they have really great efforts sometimes like for example estonia amazing uh effort with their um digital identity and and uh, that you can then use to basically uh communicate with uh, the government uh offices and with other companies as well and and in in the, the basics of that is just you have a private key and you basically sign messages with that private key and you send it to all sorts of parties that you want to right that's the idea well the only difference is that of course those uh, private keys are issued in a centralized way, which is a whole another topic. I'm not going to go into that uh, right now, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, but, but the the thinking and the philosophy around it is absolutely correct. So we're thinking, okay, how can we extend this kind of thinking and this kind of philosophy, but on a global scale? It's not about Estonia. It's not about even a certain country. How about we allow um, uh, an organization, a company in any country to have a profile like that, to uh, control their information that's, that's contained in that profile online, 
again, without the central intermediary. Um, and again, that opens so many doors and so many possibilities. So that's, that's the idea. I mean, it's a beautiful one, I'll tell you that. I cannot help myself but wonder, could we do the flip side? So, viewers at home, know this is their, their favorite segment. It's essentially, what's stopping you then from world domination, essentially? In my mind, it's, it could be two things, and correct me, I, hopefully I'm wrong. One of them is this education aspect. I don't think companies yet understand this capability. So it, it, it will take a Herculean effort to essentially educate people that this is now possible and these are all the numerous benefits of it. The second one will be to, well, get in touch with regulators because as I understand, you guys are not only just starting out, you are up and running. This is already, you know, not phase one, not phase two, you're here, you're already doing it. And could you share maybe your progress so far? Absolutely. You know, you're absolutely right that, that many companies still uh, and many people don't um, understand the benefits of this, the, the, the way forward, why this is going to be, um, you know, the best solution uh, to, to their business needs, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, but uh, we're lucky uh, because we have a few companies and, and, you know, I'm saying this with a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. Uh, we have yeah. a few companies that are really, uh, interested in innovation, interested in progress that clearly see, uh, that this is a way forward. And, uh, you know, we'll work with those companies and, uh, please do monitor the news i think uh, we'll have yeah. a few announcements that will be coming out very soon um that uh, that we hope will help uh, others to just say oh okay these guys are doing this maybe yeah. there's something uh there that we don't quite understand because well a lot of people just think in in, in that way you know so why do you feel confident Many companies uh, and many people that we talk to, they don't quite realize the potential of this technology. So a lot of people really just see the the fluctuation uh, fluctuations yeah. in, in token price and in currency price, and they completely discard everything that's related to, to Bitcoin and blockchain and stuff. Yeah. Um, but we're lucky enough to to have a few companies in the industry that's that's notoriously technically very backwards. Uh, you know, yeah. a lot of companies they're just especially right now in the COVID times they're only interested in surviving. Really, yeah. um, very few companies think about innovation right now. Very few companies have resources uh, to innovate today. Uh, but uh, as I was saying, we're lucky to have found a few of those partners that uh, are really interested in, you know, saving lots of money, creating a superior experience for for their customers, for, for the actual traveler, and to innovate right now where, uh, you know, at in a time where they cannot do anything else really, you know, travel is complicated right now. Um, Indeed, and, to say and, the least. Uh, it's the time to change things up right now. So yeah, I, I would say um, continue monitoring uh, the the news fear for mm -hmm. for some updates from us, and uh, I think we're going to have a few very exciting ones very soon. Indeed. Well, Daily Coin, we shall definitely do our best to cover this news. Thank you, Maxim. That was definitely a lovely insight into winding tree and your philosophy of a decentralized travel but not only travel marketplace in the near future and quite frankly where could people go to find more information about your project it's of course our website uh, if you go to windingtree.com uh, you'll have a lot of information there but we're always happy to talk to anyone that wants to talk to us we have a telegram group that you can join again you can find information about that on our website where we're more than happy to answer any questions yeah. we'll also have a yeah. blog uh, yeah. uh it's blog.windingtree.com where where we post yeah. those news and uh 
yeah, we have a frenzy of activity uh, around this, uh, you know, where uh, members of Decentralized Identity Foundation, so uh, we work with those guys closely. So um, I really encourage everyone to uh, monitor that topic, self-serving identity, uh, and, and just decentralized identity in general, not just Decentralized Identity Foundation. Um, yeah. A lot of really interesting things are happening in that field. It's it's amazing. Indeed. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. See you in the next one. Signing off. <laughs>